Okay, we're here by the Department of Transportation. We're about to take a test ride on one of Washington, D.C.'s electric buses. We're going to have a lot more where these came from, so I'm excited to see it for myself. All right, good morning. Here we go. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm running late. I really have to catch the bus. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. Good to see you. How about this bus? It's cool. How does he get out of here? There's a car right in front of him. Does he just push it along? Yeah, just push it out. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love public transportation? It oh, is great. the only way to go when you live in a city, that's for sure. It's a really important part of how people get through their daily commutes, but it's also a really important part of the climate solution. If we make public transportation more reliable, convenient, and attractive for, for everybody, whether you own a car or not. That's going to make a huge difference in terms of congestion, in terms of emissions, pollution. This is such a huge improvement. All we need to do is get more of them. Making sure that we have these clean buses running as frequently as we can, expanding routes, which I think a lot of cities will be able to do, thanks to the funding that's yeah, in that's this infrastructure right. law. We're really excited about the $5.6 billion in our low and no emission bus program. This is gonna buy thousands of, of buses yeah. like these. People always think about issues like climate change or air pollution as we need something new. Well, we got something new. Yeah. We got something that we can make in the United States of America where we yes. have investments going in, and it means jobs, lots yes. of jobs, union jobs. That's one of our favorite parts about this. We see a chance to build up a whole new level for the, the transportation equipment industry in the U.S. Well, one of the things I think we really have to keep in mind is that public transportation like this is so important, not just for people who, who have the luxury of having a car to leave at home, yeah. but for people who don't have other choices. Absolutely. And why would we want people to have to go in a bus that yeah. actually hurts their health? Yeah. Why wouldn't That's we right. want to give them every opportunity, especially low-income communities, communities right. of color that have been inundated by pollution for so yeah. long? We know what that does to our health and our kids' health. You know, part of uh, what we're doing with the funding is supporting the workforce training for the drivers, the mechanics, uh, anybody who's going to be involved, because it is a slightly different skill set. It's not taking away from a workforce. It's how do you really start That's building right. it not just for the future, but for today. There's a reason that the official name of this bill, right, was the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, with an emphasis yeah. on jobs. It's not just what to invest in, uh -huh. but it's also who you might leave behind and how right. do those investments get tied to those communities and those workers. That's right. We're not just pushing agencies to, uh, to go electric. We're funding everybody to do it, and that, that can make all the difference. So now that we're slowing down, should we fight to the finish to see who gets off the bus first? <laughs> we used to do it. that when we were kids. <laughs> That's right. If you want to learn more about what our administration is doing through the infrastructure law to support and fund cleaner buses, perhaps in your community, check out whitehouse.gov slash BIL. There's a lot of exciting work going on. And if you think electric v buses are cool, there's electric trucks, there's electric cars, everything is going electric. It's good for our planet, it's good for our health, it'll bring energy independence to our country. What's the problem here? Move! Let's Can't go! Say